So I'm not too sure how familiar my young audience is with an individual like James Carville. No, he's not a naked mole rat. He's actually a Democratic Party strategist who worked for Bill Clinton previously. And an issue with him is that he hasn't updated his strategy since 1992. Now, a lot of us, you know, we learned about him over the last uh, summer or fall, actually, when he was on a panel with Kyle Kalinske, and he just basically browbeated Kyle Kalinske and talked about how horrible the progressive wing of the Democratic Party is. And you're going to get a sense of just how out of touch he is in this clip that I'm about to show you, where he concerned trolls about Bernie Sanders and tells us what he thinks the Democrats need to do in order to defeat Donald Trump this year. Now, he's going to give you the same advice that Hillary Clinton accepted. Nonetheless, he thinks he's right and uh, we're wrong. So let's hear him out. A lot of people sure. compare him to Jeremy Corbyn. I say he might be closer to Lopez Obrador in Mexico, somebody who manages yeah. to get into power because the existing parties have so disappointed everybody. People are disgusted yeah. with Democrats. They don't trust Republicans. They go for Bernie. Do you think that is a path to victory if he makes that argument? Why do, why do I think people are disgusted with Democrats? We had the highest turnout in 2018 since women were granted the right to vote. We had the biggest margin. We ran a smart campaign, and it worked. All right? It mm -hmm. matters who the candidate is. It matters what a party chooses to talk about. I mean, I'm 75 years old. Why am I here doing this? Because I am scared to death. That's why. And we got to get, get, let's get relevant here, people, for sure. Okay. That, that's why I don't, Lopez Obrador, Jeremy, they were all the Sanders people were taking pictures wishing Jeremy Coburn the best. Oh, and they were mistaken. They were very mistaken. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to go down that path. Okay, all I've got for you, James, is Claire. I, hey, love, I, I, just, yeah, I just love you. <laughs> I love you, too. And your, your analysis, if you look at the, the, the press corps went AOC crazy. And, and the Iowa caucuses are liberal. It's too, it's too, whatever. To combine the, the left side of the party, and I don't, I don't consider myself a liberal, by the way. I'm not a moderate. They look, you know, Senator Klobuchar and, uh, you know, Buttigieg got a lot of votes. And we got to decide what we want to be. Do we want to be an, an ideological cult or do we want to have a majoritarian instinct to be a majority party? I know where you stand on that, Senator, because you had to run in a red state. Right. So, and, and again, you and I know that 18 percent of the country elects 52 senators. And, and, and the urban core is not going to get it done. What we need is power. You understand? That's what this is about. Without power, you have nothing. You just have talking points. You know, in the Marine Corps, they say, you know, wish in one hand and do something in the other. Which hand is going to fill up the fastest? <laughs> we, 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 better get, we, we better get serious here. And, uh, you know, a lot of d Democrats around the country are concerned. I, I know these donors are not, not going to give a popsicle to the DNC right now. I can promise you that. No joke. Listening to him speak is like nails on a chalkboard. Possibly worst. Because this is the most insufferable miserable prick I've had the displeasure of listening to in quite some time, even for MSNBC standards. I mean, that was just, that was horrible. So, I mean, the first thing that you see is them compare Bernie Sanders to, you know, Jeremy Corbyn or talk about the affinity that we have for Jeremy Corbyn. And while ideologically, you know, they may be similar, the problem with that equivalence is that Jeremy Corbyn overperformed the polls in the first election and he lost because he didn't actually have a firm strategy when it came to Brexit. And James Carville says, look, I just don't want to go down that path. Okay, well, how about this? We'll promise you, James, that in the event Bernie's the nominee and, you know, the United States votes to leave the EU, we'll have a real exit strategy. How about that? I mean... <laughs> We have no Brexit equivalent in the United States. Jeremy Corbyn lost because he didn't take a firm stance there. Ideologically speaking, I mean, people agreed with his policies, but they just seemed to care more about Brexit. These are two different countries. So while we can draw equivalences between Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn on the policy, I mean, to say that that's exactly what's going to happen is laughable. They always bring up these instances where a politician lost, like James McGovern from like 50 years ago. But as Namiki Kantz put it, Hillary Clinton was James McGovern. She ran the exact strategy that individuals like James Carville 
said that, you know, the Democratic nominee should, and she lost. So why are we taking these people seriously? Why are we bringing them on MSNBC to pontificate about something that they're clearly wrong about? On top of that, he says, look, I'm 75 years old. Why am I here doing this? Because I'm scared to death. That's why. Okay, we're all scared of Donald Trump. But why do you think the same exact moderate strategy is going to pay off this time? Trump now has the uh, economy that he can boost about. It's not necessarily true, but he's going to do it nonetheless. Trump is now a president. He has that incumbency advantage. So if that moderate strategy, that neoliberal centrist approach didn't work the first time, then why on earth would you think it'd work this time when Trump is more powerful, more formidable? It just, these people, they have worms in their brains. <laughs> To quote someone who was interviewed on uh, InfoWars once, they have worms in their brains. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, how can you be this dense? Like, nobody is a sure bet against Donald Trump, but to utilize the same failed strategy is fucking insane. Like, why are we listening to these people? They're losers. Democrats lost more than a thousand seats. And this was all under neoliberal rule. Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi. Why are we listening to them? Why isn't MSNBC bringing on people with different ideological perspectives and strategic views? I don't get it. Oh, it's because they probably want to lose to Donald Trump. Now, Claire decided to insert herself in this conversation just to tell James Carville how much she loves him. And then he goes on to give Claire McCaskill credit because she knows what type of campaign you have to win because she ran in a red state. Except what happened in her race, James. Remind us, what happened when Claire McCaskill ran to the right in a red state? She lost. She lost. She literally embraced Trump's racist immigration policies, saying that, you know, we need to stop them at the border. And now she's working for MSNBC. Maybe she's not the best person to take electoral advice and strategy advice from. Just a thought. Now, on top of that, uh, James Carville says, we've got to decide what we want to be. Do we want to be an ideological cult and have a majoritarian instinct to be, you know, a majority party? It's funny because he calls it, you know, having standards, an ideological cult, because we are very principled and disciplined. Um, but to say, no, we have to be a majoritarian party, he disregards the fact that progressive policies are incredibly popular. Medicare for all, legalizing marijuana, ending the wars a federal jobs guarantee, a Green New Deal, getting money out of politics. Every single one of these policies have majority support, not just within the Democratic Party, but among the general electorate. So if you truly want to be a majoritarian party, in other words, populist, then you should come to the progressive wing and talk about the policies that we're espousing, you know, the things we're talking about, because that's what's popular. These people are so fucking stupid, I swear to God. Now, finally, he says, what we need is power. And we don't have that because we followed your strategy. We followed your exact strategy, the ticket to uh, get power. And Donald Trump is the president of the United States, a reality television show star. He went up against the most electable centrist Democrat. Did the exact strategy that you wanted. And Trump is the president. These people have no shame. I mean, it seems like the more wrong you are, the um, the more merit you achieve in D.C. as a Democratic Party strategist. Look, whenever I see the label Democratic strategist, when anyone is talking on TV, I just automatically assume that this is one of the dumbest people in the country because it doesn't matter how wrong they are. The mainstream media still takes them seriously. They still treat them with the respect that they don't deserve. These people are proven losers. The 1992 third way strategy is no longer electorally viable, hence why Hillary lost. So it just makes no sense that this individual would be brought on MSNBC, the liberal network, supposedly uh, left-leaning, but no, they really are just neoliberal um, pro-corporate, and they just, <laughs> they say, Give us your advice. And he says, let's do what Hillary Clinton did, essentially. 
I don't know what to say. DC people, you know, uh, the pundit class, the Democratic Party, they watch MSNBC. So they really take what individuals like uh, Jason Johnson and Claire McCaskill now apparently and James Carville say, and they respect the advice that they give. That's why you see them, you know, using the same failed centrist strategy. But on top of that, it's also really convenient to utilize this centrist strategy because if you're a centrist, then you can easily appease your corporate donors and say that you are pro-woman and pro-LGBTQ while not really doing anything to help them, not changing the economy in a fundamental way, not combating corruption. So, I mean, the Democratic Party is just a colossal failure, so out of touch. And if you're wondering why people hate liberals... It's things like this that make people hate liberals. It's things like this that make young people feel disinclined to vote. This is why people stay home.